Good morning guys. We're gonna do a different format video today. We're gonna play some historic. So I'm gonna go over a, a historic deck tech. We're gonna look at green black elves and we're gonna play some matches today. We've got one new card from the anthology set in here and we'll go over when we go over the sideboard. So green, back, green Black Elves is a kind of a classic archetype, elves in general, in Magic's history. Um, there's like legacy elf decks, there's you know modern elf decks, um, even Pioneer. Um, this tribe is tried and true, it's really fun, really efficient when it works. So let's go over the deck from the beginning. Running four copies of Llanowar Elves, it's a must play in most green decks let alone elf decks, so just one mana 1-1 one, one, and you can tap to add a green mana and it adds to our elf synergy. Four copies of Elvish Visionary. Um, I think we got this from an anthology set for Historic 2. Um, it's a two mana 1-1 one, one, creature elf shaman and when it enters the battlefield draw a card. So it just it replaces itself and it counts as an elf. Running three copies of Incubation Druid, two mana, zero two Elf Druid, and you can add, you can tap in, add one mana of any type that a land you control could produce. And if Incubation Druid has a plus one plus one counter on it, add three mana of that type instead. And you can pay five mana to adapt three, which means if it doesn't have a counter on it, you could put three one one counters on it by paying five. So really good card. If it's left unchecked, we can get some gross mana out of this, and it can be a reasonable creature later, uh, 3-5. Three copies of Thorn Lieutenant, 2 mana 2-3 two, creature elf warrior, and when Thorn Lieutenant becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, create a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token. So if they try to kill this, it's going to leave something behind, so it's sticky, that's a good term for it. It's going to stay stick around on the board for quite some time and you can pay 6 mana late game and Thorn Lieutenant gets plus 4 plus 4 until end of turn. And there is some times we'll be able to do that twice because we can get a lot of mana in this deck. Next 2 drop is 4 copies of Elvish Clan Caller, 2 mana 1-1 one, one, creature Elf Druid, and other elves you control get plus 1 plus 1. So an Elf Lord pumps all of our other elves and we can pay 6 mana and tap her to search our library for another elvish clan caller and put it right onto the battlefield. So a lord that searches up other lords, so we're definitely running the four of there. Running one copy of Finale of Devastation. It's a double green X sorcery spell. Search your library and or graveyard for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. And if you search your library this way, shuffle it. And if X is 10 or more, creatures you control get plus X plus X and gain haste until end of turn. So this is our one of our big finishers. The idea is to either go get this for 8 mana or wait till we have 10 and get pretty much anything and win the game on the spot. Really good card just as the one of. In our 3 drop slot, um, we got this from a Special Historic set, set 2, Imperious Perfect, 3 mana 2 2 creature elf warrior, and other creatures you, other elf creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1, so 3 more lord effects, 3 more anthems, and we can pay 1 green mana and tap them, tap her for create a 1 1 green elf warrior creature token, so it makes creatures for it to pump, so really strong card. Three copies of Marwyn the Nurturer, three mana, one one, legendary elf, legendary creature elf druid from Dominaria. And whenever another elf enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Marwyn. And you can tap Marwyn to add an amount of forest equal to Marwyn's power. So you can see how that can get out of hand pretty quickly. This is one of our greatest mana accelerants. Three copies of Steel Leaf Champion. Triple Forest, 5-4, Creature Elf Knight, also from Dominaria. Steel Leaf Champion can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. So really strong beater on the ground, it's a good stompy creature. 
and it gets really crazy if we get some lords out this it it's really really big and it's hard to block three copies of beast whisperer four mana two three creature elf druid and whenever you cast a creature spell you draw a card so our deck is almost all creatures so we'll draw a bunch of cards off this three copies of poison tip archer one of the reasons to be in black it is a four mana two three creature elf archer it's got reach and death touch which is awesome so it can block anything and kill it pretty much without indestructible and whenever another creature dies each opponent loses one life so that's any creature this card is awesome in this deck one copy of store of Dev Karen Lich. It is a 4 mana 5 4 legendary creature zombie elf wizard with trample. And when this deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, you can return to your hand target creature or planeswalker card in your graveyard that wasn't put there this combat. So some nice reanimation to our hand. So it's nice to have just the one of. We don't want to have a bunch of these in our hand, but it's still a good card. And it is an elf. One copy of Vanquisher's Banner, five mana artifact. And as this enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type. So we'll obviously choose elf. And creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. So that's our eighth anthem. And also, whenever you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, you draw a card. So that's our four copies of some card advantage. So we can get back into the game. Some more court card draw here. One copy of Izoni Thousand Eyed. It is a 6 mana 2 3 legendary creature elf shaman with undergrowth. Undergrowth is, um, it checks the number of creature cards in your graveyard. And when this enters the battlefield, you create 1 1 black green insect creature token for each creature card in our graveyard. So our deck is almost all creatures. So this will make a bunch of 1 1 black insect creature tokens in the late game. We can also pay 2 mana to sacrifice another creature to gain 1 life and draw a card. So yet some more card draw. And one copy of Enray's Forerunners. It's kind of like our Crater of Behemoth and Historic. It's a 8 mana 7-7 seven, seven, Vigilance Trample Haste. And when Enray's Forerunners enters the battlefield, the other creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2 in Vigilance and Trample until end of turn. So 9 times out of 10 when we play this card we're going to win the game because we're going to have a bunch of these out and they all get haste and trample and well they don't get haste but this has haste. We can get this with finale too to really close out the game on the spot. And that's going to wrap up the main deck besides the mana base. We're running 4 unclaimed territories. Really good in a tribal deck. As it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type, we'll choose Elf. And we can, it taps to add generic mana, or we can add any mana of any color to cast the creature of that chosen type. So it helps us cast our black elves. Four copies of Woodland Cemetery. Um, it comes into play tapped unless we control another swamp or forest. Four copies of Overgrown Tomb, the black green shock land. And nine forests. Now, in our sideboard, we're running four Agonizing Remorse. It's a two mana sorcery, and target opponent reveals their hand, and you choose a non land card from it or a card from their graveyard and exile that card. You lose one life. So, really good against control matchups, uh, really good against some mid raid matchups, some uh, ramp matchups, things of that nature. Uh, so, this is the new card that came from the newest historic set. Two copies of Trainer's Edict and is two mana sorcery. And target player sacrifices a creature. And it has flashback for seven mana. Uh, so we can cast this from our graveyard and then exile it for its flashback, flashback cost. So if we run into any hexproof creatures, any creatures we can't directly target, we'll bring this in. Or if there's just a lot of big creatures, like one at a time, we'll bring it in. Two copies of Noxious Grasp, two mana instant, destroy target creature or planeswalker that's green or white. So that's self-explanatory. If we see green or white, we bring this in. 
two Destiny Spinner. Two mana, two, three enchantment creature. And creatures and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. Also, you can pay four. Target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until end of turn, where X is the number of enchantments you control. And it's still a land. So, we're really just bringing this in for the counter clause. So, against any counter deck, we'll bring this in to protect our creatures from counter spells. One copy of Vivian Champion of the Wilds, three mana, four loyalty Planeswalker. And you may cast creature spells as though they had flush. You can plus one her, and until your next turn, up to one target creature gains vigilance and reach. And we can minus two her. And look at the top three cards of your library and exile one face down, and put the rest on the bottom of the library in any order. And for as long as this remains exiled, you may look at the top. You may look at the that card and you may cast it if it's a creature card. So against grindier matchups where we need to get some more value we'll bring this in. And it's really good against control too because we can just hold up our creatures and play them at the end of their turn. One copy of Erebos Bleak Hearted. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm not exactly convinced I should be running this. I'll keep it in for now. Um, so we can sacrifice like our extra creatures that aren't doing much, like the Elvish Visionary. So it's a four mana, five six legendary enchantment creature, indestructible. As long as your devotion to black is less than five, it isn't a creature. Um, we're probably not gonna hit that devotion cost, but you can. Um, Pay two to sacrifice a creature, and target creature gets minus two, minus one until end of turn. And there's no tap ability on that, so we can actually pump a bunch of mana into that because we have access to a bunch of mana. And also, whenever another creature we control dies, we can pay two life and draw a card, so it is more card advantage. So against really grindy matchups or control matchups, I'll bring this in, see how it does. Two copies of Nightmare Shepherd. It's a 4 mana 4-4 four, four with flying, and whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it, and if you do create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a 1-1, one, one, and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. So against a lot of removal, we'll bring this in to protect our creatures from dying permanently. It gives them an extra life. And one copy of Questing Beast, 4 mana 4-4 four, four with Vigilance, Death, Touch, Haste. It can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. And combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. And whenever Questing Beast deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player controls. So against Planeswalker heavy decks, and also decks like um, Fog decks, we'll bring this in against. Because the damage can't be prevented. So that's going to wrap up Green Black Elves for Historic. Today is 526 and we're going to play some games today. Um, I actually haven't played the Historic Ladder in a while, they just brought it back, so it'll be fun to do that again. Alright guys, we are going to hop into some games. If you like the content and want to see more deck techs, maybe some more Historic deck techs, leave a comment, leave a like, certainly subscribe. I'm trying to hit 100 subscribers and everything helps out a lot. I appreciate you guys, and uh, have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video.